Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. If this is your first time, let me give you a quick rundown on what we're all about. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we build fun and inexpensive focused Commander decks. A focused Commander deck is more tuned than a casual deck, but not quite to the level of a competitive or optimized deck. Commander's Quarters decks are built within a $25 budget. That's $25 for 100 cards. And prices on this show are powered by our sponsor, TCG Player. Before we get started today, though, make sure you go check out our new Golden Pig playmat on thecommandersquarters.com. And thank you to everyone who's bought one so far. It really does help support the channel. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you stay up to date on the latest Commander's Quarters episodes. Today's commander is Marik Rebarrett. Marik is a 1-1 human that costs white, blue, black. She doesn't untap during her untap step, and she has tap, gain control of target creature for as long as you control her. When she leaves the battlefield or becomes untapped, destroy that creature, it can't be regenerated. Marik is a very powerful commander to build around. We can tap her to gain control of any of our opponent's creatures. And although she doesn't untap on her own, we've got plenty of ways that we can use to untap her. So what's our strategy for this deck? Well, we want to get her out quickly along with some untap effects. By being able to choose when we want to untap her, we can really control the board. And then how do we win with this deck? Well, we're going to kill our opponents by killing and controlling their best creatures. Now, although Marie can only control one creature at a time, we've got plenty of ways to actually control those creatures permanently so that we can get another creature with her. Marie is very good at putting our opponents in a tough situation. If they do play a good creature, we're going to gain control of it, but if they don't, we're going to overwhelm them. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to break this deck down into 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how you're going to win with it. So let's first go on to tactic number one, the quarry. Now we want to get Marik out as early as we can, so it's crucial that we can fix our mana. So we're going to be running things like Renegade Map, Traveler's Amulet, and Wanderer's Twig. Renegade Map is going to enter the battlefield tapped, but then we can tap to sacrifice it to search our library for a basic land to put into our hand. And then by paying one, we can sacrifice Traveler's Amulet or Wanderer's Twig to search our library for that basic land. And then there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Next up is Prismatic Lens, which can either tap for our colorless, or we can pay one to filter our mana. And then there's Sphere of the Suns, which enters the battlefield tapped, and we can tap it three times to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. Next up, we're running three mirror that tap for one color each. Silver mirror is going to tap for a blue, leaded mirror will tap for a black, and gold mirror will tap for a white. Then we're running two of the diamonds. We're running Charcoal Diamond, which taps for a black, and Marble Diamond, which taps for a white, but both enter the battlefield tapped. Finally, we're going to be running all three signets that we can. There's Demir Signet, Azorius Signet, and Orzov Signet, each of which we can pay one into and tap, and they will add their colors. Again, with this deck, it's important for us to get our commander out quickly. That's why all of our ramp and fixing actually costs less than our commander does. But it's also important for us to protect our commander once we cast her. Let's go through some of the ways that we can do that in tactic number two, Raspberry Barrett. First up, there's Swiftfoot Boots, which will not only protect our commander by giving her hexproof, but it's also going to give her haste so we can tap her right away. And then there's Glaring Spotlight, which also serves a double purpose in this deck. First off, this allows us to target our opponent's creatures that have Hexproof. And secondly, we can pay 3 to sacrifice it to make our creatures Hexproof and unblockable until the end of the turn. So we can either use it to help us gain control of our opponent's creatures with our commander's ability, or we can use it to save our commander if we need to. And finally, there's Crab Umbra, which will allow us to untap Marik for just 2 and a blue. On top of that, it's going to protect her because it has Totem Armor. Again, it's important that we keep our commander alive with this deck because the deck definitely revolves around her. There are going to be more protection spells coming ahead, but let's talk about how we actually get to those spells. So it's time to move on to tactic number three, Hit Me. First up, there's Enclave Cryptologist, which just starts off as a 0-1. But if we level her up to level 1 or 2, we can tap her to draw a card and then discard a card. And if she's at level 3, we can just straight up tap her to draw a card. And then there's Merfolk Looter and Thought Courier, both of which don't require any leveling. Each of them has tap to draw a card and then discard a card. And next up is Arcanus the Omnipotent, which is going to let us draw a ton of cards. It has tap to draw three cards, and if it's ever in trouble, we can pay two blue blue to return it back to our hand. Now the great thing about this deck is that we're running plenty of ways to untap creatures. So if we don't need to untap our commander with those effects, we can actually use them to untap these creatures to draw some cards. And some of those ways to untap creatures are actually going to draw some cards themselves. Cerulean Wisps and Refocus will both let us untap one target creature, and we get to draw a card. And finally, there's two arms, which will let us untap all creatures that we control, and we get to draw a card. With the right creatures in play, this card can come in huge. And by drawing more and more cards, we can really get to those spells that make a difference for this deck. But there are even some ways to take shortcuts and just straight up find the card that we need. So let's go through those cards now in tactic number four, a little help. First up, we've got Diabolic Tutor and Razakest Right, both of which will let us search our library for any card and put into our hand, and then we shuffle our library. Now Razakest Right does cost us one more mana, but we can actually cycle it if we want to for just a black. And then there's Shred Memory and Demir Infiltrator, both of which we can transmute. When we transmute them, we're going to discard them and then search our library for a card with a converted mana cost of two. And if we need them for some reason, we can just straight up cast them instead of transmuting them, but the vast majority of the time, we're just going to search for one of our best cards. And next up is Perplex, which we can also transmute, but this one's going to transmute to find something with a converted mana cost of 3. 
And on top of that, it's actually a pretty decent counter spell. It's going to counter target spell unless its controller discards his or her hand. And finally, there's Clutch to the Undercity, which is going to let us return target permanent to its owner's hand, and then they're going to lose 3 life. But the main reason that's in this deck is it also has Transmute. So by paying its Transmute cost and discarding it, we can search our library for anything with converted mana cost of 4. There are plenty of cards that we can search for that work very well with our commander. So let's first go through some of those creatures that can help her out in tactic number 5, Untapped Potential. First up there's Trickster Mage, which we can pay 1 to tap and discard a card from our hand to either tap or untap target artifact, creature, or land. Now this can help us defensively if we needed to, but the majority of the time we're going to be using this to untap our commander. Remember, if Marika is in control of a creature and we untap her, it's going to destroy that creature. And then we can tap her again to gain control of another creature. So being able to do this whenever we want really helps us control the board. So we're also going to be running things like Vizier of Tumbling Sands, Tidewater Minion, and Fate Stitcher, each of which will allow us to untap another target permanent. On top of that, we can cycle Vizier of Tumbling Sands if we need to, to untap a permanent. And also, Fate Stitcher will also let us tap another target permanent, and we can even unearth it for just a blue. And next up is Norit, which has some strange abilities. We can tap it to untap target blue creature, and the majority of creatures in our deck that we use for tapping are blue. And its other ability is basically we can force a creature to attack, or it's going to be destroyed, but there are some stipulations in there. But the important thing with Nord, and the main thing that we're going to use it for, is to untap our commander. And finally we're going to be running Puppeteer, Niblis of the Breath, and Tideforce Elemental. By paying a blue we can tap them to either tap a creature, or untap another target creature. On top of that, Tidewater Elemental actually has landfall, so whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we can untap it. Now untapping our commander with creatures is great, but we've got even more ways to do it. Let's go through some of those ways in tactic number 6, Untap Out. First up there's Unbender Tine, which is an artifact that just straight up has tap to untap another target permanent. Now in some ways this card might be a little more effective than our creatures because it's a little harder for our opponents to deal with. And then there's Retreat to Coral Helm which can be even more effective. It has landfall so whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control we can choose one. We can either tap or untap target creature or we can scry one. Now again the majority of time in this deck we're going to choose to untap our commander or another one of our creatures. And we do have ways in this deck to get more than one landfall trigger in a turn so that we can untap our commander multiple times. Again, artifacts and enchantments are a little harder for our opponents to deal with, so they can usually stay on the battlefield longer. But now let's talk about a specific kind of enchantment that can really help us out in this deck. It's time to go into tactic number 7, Untap Dance. First up we've got Second Wind, which is a very strange aura. It has Enchant Creature, and we can tap Second Wind to tap the Enchanted Creature, or we can tap it to untap Enchanted Creature. Again, just take note that this actually doesn't give the creature the ability to tap or untap itself. The aura is actually tapping to either tap or untap it. And then we've got Freed from the Real and Pemmin's Aura, both of which are two of our best cards in this deck. Freed from the Real will allow us to just pay a blue to tap or untap Enchanted Creature. Pemmin's Aura will also allow us to pay a blue to untap Enchanted Creature. And on top of that, we can also pay a blue to give it Flying, or pay a blue to give it Shroud. And we can even pay one generic mana to give it plus one, minus one, or minus one, plus one until the end of the turn. But the main thing that we care about with these cards is the ability to pay blue to untap the Enchanted Creature. Either of these on our commander is a nightmare for our opponents. And next up there's a Mobilizing Ink, which has Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step, and it gives the Enchanted Creature pay one, discard a card from your hand, untap this creature. That first part about this card really doesn't matter because our commander already can't untap during our untap step. But the second part, being able to pay one generic mana to discard a card and untap this creature, is huge. While there is the downside of having to discard a card, that's well worth it in getting control of an opponent's creature and killing off another one. Now while Immobilizing Ink is a bit more flexible because it only requires a generic mana and not a blue mana like Freed from the Real or Pemmin's Aura, it still does have that restriction of having to discard a card. But our Golden Pig of the deck has no such restriction. The Golden Pig is the number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Aura of Dominion. Aura of Dominion is an aura that costs blue blue. It has pay one and tap an untapped creature you control to untap enchanted creature. So again, like Immobilizing Ink, we can use any kind of mana to actually activate this. And the only restriction is that we have to tap an untapped creature that we control. Now we are running plenty of other creatures in this deck that we can actually tap for this, but we do have our opponent's creatures too. So the scenario can go like this. We tap Marik to gain control of one of our opponent's untapped creatures. We can then pay one mana, tap that creature, and then untap Marik, which will kill that creature. Then we're free to tap Marik again and do this over and over again until we run out of mana or untapped creatures on the board. With this aura on Marik, she's extremely effective and deadly, which is why this is the golden pig of the deck. So we've talked a lot about cards that help us with our strategy, but what about stopping our opponents? Let's go through some cards that help us with that in tactic number 8, the wrench. First up there's Blessed Alliance, which we can choose one or more if we escalate it. We can either make target player gain 4 life, we can untap up to 2 target creatures, or we can make target opponent sacrifice an attacking creature. This is a very flexible card that can help us out in a variety of situations. Speaking of a flexible card, there's Energy Arc. It's an instant that allows us to untap any number of target creatures and then prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and by them until the end of the turn. 
So not only does this act as a fog, but it also allows us to untap our creatures so that we can use their activated abilities again. Next up is Cast Out, which can deal with pretty much anything. It has Flash, and when it enters the battlefield, we get to exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Cast Out leaves the battlefield. On top of that, we can even cycle it for a white in case we don't need it. And finally, we're going to be running Negate, Counter Squall, and Unwind, each of which can counter target non-creature spell. On top of that, Counter Squall is going to make its controller lose two life, and Unwind will allow us to untap up to three lands. Again, our commander can handle the creatures, but we need some other cards to handle those non-creature spells. Speaking of handling creatures, let's go through some cards that help us do that in tactic number 9. Stay with me. First up, there's Cal Suppressor, which has some similarities to our commander. It has, you may choose not to untap it during your untap snap, and when it comes into play, an opponent is going to choose a creature type. Then we can tap it to gain control of target creature that isn't of the chosen type as long as it remains tapped. So unlike Marik, it does have the restriction that it can't get certain creatures. On top of that, it isn't going to destroy any creature when we untap it but it is another effective way to temporarily gain control of some creatures. But there are some ways that we can make that control permanent for both Cal Suppressor and for our commander. We can use things like Cloud Shift and Ghostly Flicker. Cloud Shift is going to let us exile a target creature that we control and return to the battlefield back under our control. And then Ghostly Flicker will let us exile two target artifacts, creatures, and or lands we control and then return those cards to the battlefield under our control. Now the key text in both of these cards is return them to the battlefield under our control. So let's say we tap our commander to gain control of a creature. If we then cloud shift it, that creature is going to be exiled and then return to the battlefield back under our control. It'll no longer be tied to Marik and we're free to untap Marik without destroying it. Another way to do this is with Restoration Angel. Restoration Angel has flash and flying and when it enters the battlefield we can exile target non-angel creature we control and then return that card to the battlefield under our control. So this is going to work the exact same as long as that creature that we gain control of isn't an angel. And next up there's a few more ways that we can gain control of creatures permanently. First up is Sinon Sanctum, which we can pay 2 to tap to exile target permanent we control. And then at any time we can pay 2 to sacrifice it to return all cards exiled with it back to the battlefield under our control. So with this we can just start exiling creatures that Marik is controlling and then whenever we want to we can pay 2 to sacrifice it to bring all those creatures back into play under our control. And then Cold Storage is very similar in the way that it works. We will have to pay 3 to exile that creature, but we don't have to tap it so we can do this multiple times in a turn. And then we also don't have to pay to sacrifice it, so we can sacrifice it at any time to bring all those cards back into play under our control. And then there's Deadeye Navigator, which has Soul Bond, and as long as it's paired with another creature, each of those creatures has pay one into blue, exile this creature, and then return to the battlefield under your control. So if we control one of our opponent's creatures with Marik, we just have to exile Deadeye Navigator and then bring him back into play and then pair him with that creature. Then by paying one into blue, we can exile that creature to permanently gain control of it. Also, Deadeye Navigator is a very good way for us to protect our commander if we need to. Next up is Jin of Infinite Deceits, which we can tap to exchange control of two target non-legendary creatures, and we can't activate this during combat. So if we use Marik to gain control of a non-legendary creature, we can just tap the Jin in order to exchange control of that creature and another creature. This way we can permanently gain control of a creature that won't be affected by Marik untapping. But finally there's a Dark Heart Valkyrie, which really cares about Marik untapping and destroying those creatures. It has tap when target creature other than a Dark Heart Valkyrie dies this turn, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So now when Marika untaps, we don't lose that creature forever, instead we get to gain control of it permanently. So we've talked about a lot of creatures in this deck that have some great activated abilities. Now let's talk about ways that we can use all of their abilities more than once in a turn. It's time to go on to tactic number 10, all together now. First up there's Dramatic Reversal, which will let us untap all non-land permanents that we control. So not only does this untap all of our creatures, but it also untaps all of our artifacts, including our mana rocks. Then there's Intellectual Offering, which can be a very political card. First we're going to choose an opponent and then both of us get to draw 3 cards. And then we get to choose an opponent and then both of us get to untap all non-land permanents that we control. So not only does this help us with card advantage, but it also helps us get some more activated abilities out of our creatures. And finally there's Village Bellringer which has flash and when it enters the battlefield we get to untap all creatures that we control. And this is a fantastic effect on a creature, especially since we can abuse it with things like Deadeye Navigator. This deck is a ton of fun and can take control of the board very quickly. But now that we've gone through the cards that help us win with this deck, let's go through the cards that help make it happen. It's time to go on to the mana base. We're going to be running 36 lands in this deck, including Arcane Sanctum, which enters the battlefield tapped, but can tap for any of our colors. And then we've got Meandering River, Tranquil Cove, and Sejiri Refuge, each of which enters the battlefield tapped, and can tap for either white or blue. On top of that, both Tranquil Cove and Sejiri Refuge will gain us one life when they come into play. Next up, there's Submerged Boneyard, Jawar Isle Refuge, and Dismal Backwater, each of which enters the battlefield tapped and can tap for either a blue or a black. And Jawar Isle Refuge and Dismal Backwater have the added benefit of gaining us one life when they come into play. Then there's Forsaken Sanctuary, Orzhov Guildgate, and Scarred Barons, each of which enters the battlefield tapped and taps for either a white or a black. 
On top of that, Scoured Barrens is going to gain us one life when it comes into play. Next up is Tainted Field, which can either tap for a colorless, or if we control a swamp, it can tap for either a white or a black mana. And then there's Demir Aqueduct and Azorius Chancery. Both are going to enter the battlefield tapped and make us return a land back to our hand. They do have the added benefit, though, of tapping for two mana each. Next up is Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap to sacrifice to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. And then we're running Esper, Grixis, and Bant Panorama, each of which can tap for a colorless, or we can pay one to tap and sacrifice them to search for a basic land and put into play tapped. Esper can search for any of our basic lands, but Grixis and Bant are both limited to two of them. Next up is Warp Landscape and Terminal Moraine, both of which can tap for a colorless, or we can pay two to tap and sacrifice them to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Finally, we're going to be running 16 basic lands, 10 of those are going to be islands, 3 will be swamps, and 3 will be plains. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Marik EDH rec deck is going to set you back $268.50, so let's see how we compare to that. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at just $24.96. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are built to be tuned and focused within that $25 budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades to see what some of those ways just might be. First up is a Fetto Alchemist, which comes in at $2.12. A Fetto Alchemist is a 1-2 wizard that costs 1 in a blue. It has tap to untap target artifact or creature, and we can morph it for a blue. This is a very efficient way for us to untap our commander, and it can even untap our mana rocks if we want it to. Then there's Mage Rite Stone, which comes in at $3.07. It's an artifact that costs 2, and it has pay 1 to tap to untap target creature that has an activated ability with tap in its cost. We're running a ton of creatures in this deck that this can untap for just one mana. Next up is Thousand Year Elixir, which comes in at $4.77. It's an artifact that costs 3, and it says you may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste, and we can pay 1 to tap it to untap target creature. This card is amazing in this deck. It effectively gives our most important creatures haste, and we can even use it to untap those creatures. Then there's Arcane Lighthouse, which comes in at $2.04. Arcane Lighthouse is a land that can tap for a colorless, or it can pay 1 to tap it, and until the end of the turn, creatures your opponents control lose Hexproof and Shroud, and can't have Hexproof or Shroud. This is just another great way for us to allow our commander to target pretty much any creature. Next up is Illusionist Bracers, which comes in at $3.62. It's an equipment that costs 2, and it costs 3 to equip. It says whenever an ability of equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a man ability, copy that ability, and you may choose new targets for that copy. So with this equipped to our commander, instead of gaining control of one creature, we get to gain control of two. Finally, there's Conjurer's Closet, which comes in at $2.74. Conjurer's Closet is an artifact that costs five, and it says at the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control and then return that card to the battlefield under your control. This is a great continuous way for us to gain control of creatures at the end of our turn. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really just want to hear about what you guys think about this deck, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying decks like this one, or just individual cards, make sure you use that deck list link in the description below. Because not only will you get great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. And make sure you follow us on social media so that you can get some early hints on who the next commander just might be. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There's even a general tier where you get your own personalized deck tack dedicated to you. If you enjoyed this deck tech, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out our other deck techs, Commander Excluded episodes, and Super Budget episodes too. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.